Hey watch friends, today we're going to take a look at this all new offering from the microbrand Trafford and this is their Crossroads. This one will be coming to Kickstarter on November 1st of 2022. First, for administrative matters, I do want to mention up front, this is a prototype that's loaned to the channel for review. However, if you saw that paid promotion banner, they do intend to send me a production version. Additionally, being a prototype, if you see scratches, scuffs, imperfections, etc., it can be attributed to that. Additionally, this uh, right here, the second strap that you see, this is actually the stock strap that it includes. I'm running it on this canvas strap, as you can see, and we'll look at this further, including wrist footage, as we go through. But before we dive into the watch itself, let's go ahead and first take a quick look at the packaging. The packaging for these watches is clearly well thought out. On the outside, you have these custom sleeves, and each of these varies depending on the actual colorway that you get, and this is slipped over. On the inside, you have this soft touch cardboard, as you can see, long, like book style finishing for, for this. It has the company branding, and then as you open that up, you have kind of like a carpet material on the inside that has the splayed out presentation of the watch itself. Lifting that out, and you have two little pools on the, on the side here as I almost drop it there. Underneath you have a Trafford sticker. You have nice branded microfiber cloth. Then you have the warranty card. And as you can see here, it does come with a two year warranty. But the coolest touch, and I absolutely love this, is it comes with these coins. And I'll show you both sides here. But these I think are really slick. So you've got the logo and then you've got the Crossroads branding on that really cool touch. Something I haven't seen before from a micro. I like that a lot. All right, so now that we see how this comes presented, let's get into the actual specs. This one with being a rectangular case, I measured from the three o'clock to nine o'clock position at roughly 36.5 millimeters. Coming from the 12 to six, it's coming in at 37.7 millimeters. Those dimensions though can be a bit deceiving. If you're not familiar with this case size, or case style rather, as you'll see, the size I think does wear larger than the dimensions would otherwise denote. So wait until you see the wrist footage before you judge as far as whether this is too small for you. The answer is, I don't think it's gonna be too small for many people. The bezel on this one does step down slightly, and this is coming in at 35.9 millimeters, again, from the three to nine. The lugs are a strap versatile 20 millimeters, hence my ability to change it out there. The lug to lug is a nice wrist versatile 45.7. So this should work well for most smaller wrists, even though it does wear a little larger, but it will also, I think, have plenty of presence for larger wrists. The thickness. At the thickest point, because as you can see, it is curved here, it is coming in at 11.3 millimeters. And speaking of the curve, you can see that curve does continue into the actual crystal itself. Look at that gorgeous distortion. The crystal is a, as you can see, curved, um, curved sapphire crystal with an inner AR coating for that. But I love that distortive effect that this gets. Really cool touch for that. And it doesn't pick up nearly the glare that you're seeing here on camera in real world usage. That's just from those angles. The movement, this is coming in the one we're looking at today with a Miyota 9039. So excellent higher beat movement, good power reserve, hacking, hand winding, all that kind of good stuff. However, they are actually considering offering a second one in the campaign, which would be a Seiko VH31, which was a mecha quartz movement. It does only have about a two year battery life and only reduces the price about $100, which speaking of price, the early bird pricing for this on the mechanical version we're looking at today is expected to come in around $499. On the Mecha Quartz, if they do offer it, it would come in around $399. And the reason for that being, it's not your typical cheap quartz movement. It actually has a somewhat sweeping hand. It's not quite as uh, as smooth as even like an NH35, however, it's certainly not the abrupt ticks that you get from most quartz movements. So de do definitely drop me a comment down in the description. They'll be checking those out and looking for feedback as to see whether they offer both, uh, both styles or only stick with this 9039, but this one's definitely happening. The water resistance is coming in at 50 meters or 5 atmospheres, so pretty minimal there, but I think in keeping with the style overall. As far as the weight, the head alone is coming in at 68.7 grams, and then once you factor in the factory strap, that's coming in at 79.8 grams. So I think nice and well balanced overall, and right about where you'd expect it to be for weight. So now that we have the basic specs out of the way, let's dive deeper into this watch. First, for the colors. This has four, in my opinion, gorgeous colors. There's the green version that we're looking at today. There's additionally a deep saturated blue version. There's a burgundy or wine colored. And then there's also a really deep kind of bluish like steel gray uh, as well. And personally, the burgundy or gray are probably my favorites. Each of these dials though is going to have a similar characteristic. Each of them has very saturated, very vibrant colors, even the gray version. They all have in the center a subtly inlaid sector, which of course, keeping with the rectangular shape. 
And I think that is a really nice touch as well. Very well incorporated. And then each of those in the inlay is going to have printing. At the 12 o'clock position, you're going to have the brand name. And then at the 6 o'clock position, you'll have crossroads and automatic, at least on this particular variant. And I think it's a lot of lines of text. However, I do think it's well incorporated. Going out to the outer perimeter, you can see there is a nice steeply sloped chapter ring, which does have your individual hashes, so you can tell precision time keeping and legibility. Shifting over to the hardware, this has a custom handset that I would describe the hour and minute hand as being a skeletonized syringe. That is a matte finish because as we'll see, that does have loom applied. The second hand is going to be an accent color in each variant, and that's what I would describe as an arrow, not so much an outer tip arrow, but an actual true like quiver, uh, bow and arrow type, uh, type construction there. And that does not have loom on this. Which speaking of the loom, in the production version, as you can see here, there is a little bit of a color variation, but the production version will have uniform. I've got to say, for being printed application, this actually surprisingly performs very well, and that's been true to real-world usage as well. That's not just on-camera footage. I've been surprised how well this has actually come out here, especially for the style. No, it's not going to win a loom war, but I think it's plenty respectable and adequate for the style of watch. Shifting over to the bezel, the bezel, as we already talked about, is slightly stepped back. This is actually a one-piece construction, so it's just seamlessly integrated into this case overall. The brushing is going to have a, uh, rather the uh, bezel is going to have a brush finish, and it does continue with that curvature that you see through the rest, as we already saw when we looked at the silhouette. Transitioning down to the case itself, you can see again, that theme of curved lines flows throughout here as well. And that is true of this case side, which the case side, unlike the upper and lower portions, actually switches over to a polish. So it gives nice contrast as you go through and really not only allows that to pop, but additionally, because it's just the mid case that's kind of carved in like that, it really slims out the overall profile. As you can see, the smooth flowing lines do come down cleanly right to the end of this very shallow case back that we'll, uh, we'll look at here shortly. The lines, I think, in that nice kind of slimming out carries over to the lugs as well. You can really see the profile and silhouette of this. It really, I think, blends well. Not only does it give it a very clean aesthetic, instead of giving a chunky look, I think that just flows gracefully to that strap and allows it to shrink down in size. Shifting over to the crown side, you can see the case, while not really truly what I would call a crown guard, does kind of house around, so it just sets and nests nicely into there, and they carry that finishing contrast up into the crown area as well, which I think is a great touch. The crown itself is coming in at 7.3 millimeters. This, as you would, I'm sure, imagine for the style, is just a push-pull crown for overall. So let's check that out. You can see the hacking there, and then start that back up. Very easy to grip a hold of, nice large size for that. You can see, though, despite the fact that it is fairly wide in this sense, it is actually very thin to the case, which I think integrates perfectly, and I think this is an ideal choice for this style watch. The actual milling, you can see nice, cleanly done, and that's part of what allows you to get an easy grip, despite the fact that there's not a lot of surface area on that. And then on the exterior, you can see this does have a nicely applied version of their logo there, and that is going to be polished against that kind of blast texture there, so you can see for nice contrast. So I think, again, very well done. Shifting over to the case back, the case back on this is an inlaid pattern. So you actually have, instead of sitting proud on the actual mid case, this is set down in, which is part of what lends that overall very thin profile. The case back itself is held in with screws, so not screw in, held in actually with screws. That inlay is polished and again set up against the brush, so I think it's nice the way they did the alternating of the finishes throughout there. And I should note, on the production version, they are actually going to include hardened coating on all of these surfaces. So everywhere where you see polish, that will stay keeping nice with the uh, actual polish finish. It's not going to get scratched up like your typical would. One of the most prominent things though, that you're going to notice on the case back is that it does have, of course, an exhibition window. And in that exhibition window, you can see that very bright, very vibrant red rotor, uh, custom rotor that they have. On the production version, they will actually be smoothing that out. So the finish, I think, will be a little nicer uh, applied on that. It's going to have a little more of a metallic look than this kind of sandy texture that's on there now. That's a welcome change in my book. All right, shifting to the actual strap. First, for the strap here, as you can see, this current color is a pretty dark and saturated brown. The actual production version is going to be a lighter color, and I'll look at a comp that's going to be relatively similar to that coloration. The 
strap itself, the stock included strap, is a leather strap. It has a custom buckle, which is going to be a brushed finish, and it does have their sign logo on that. And then on the interior, you can see that this does have, again, nice texture and quick release spring bars as well. So I think that's a nice touch. All right, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at some comps so you can get an idea kind of of the coloration as well as the sizing. First, I'm bringing in, this is a Zelos Nova, and you can see kind of comparison here. This one, I think, has a good bit of presence for what it is. It's a little smaller at 38 millimeters, but kind of looking at one that's listed as, you know, 37, they're about uh, 37, 38, depending on your measurements. This, I think, has a lot more dial presence than this, and this already has a good bit of dial presence. But one of the main things I want to look at here is just to give you an idea. This is closer to the coloration of the strap that this particular one would have. This is a Colareb Strapple, which is my go-to choice for leather substitutes. Bring in another one. This is a Reverie, and you can see this is another burgundy dial color. I wanted to give you just an idea as to somewhat what that might look like, though their color is, I think, more saturated on the Trafford. But that gives you an idea, and then again, sizing-wise, this is comparing next to a 40. So I think this has every bit the presence of a typical 40 millimeter watch. And then bringing in another green, so you can see just how unique this shade of green is. This is the Wise Hitman, and this is, I believe, specced at 41 millimeters, and again, every bit the presence of, uh, of that. So that just gives you an idea of the sizing as well as some of the coloration. So now that we hopefully have a better feel for the watch itself, let's talk about my view of the overall for the positives, the critiques, as well as the summary. First, for the positives, I've got to say, I give this one a lot of positive feedback. This has been a watch that I've been extremely hyped about to see all year. I've been watching for the development of this as it went through the progression, watching the design get refined, and I think it has really all come together. To me, I'm beyond smitten with this design. I think it clearly shows how much effort and thought they put into this in gathering the feedback. The actual style, I think, is extremely versatile. You know, put on a canvas strap like this, it works great for casual duty. If you put it on the leather strap, or in the future, they're possibly going to be bringing out a bracelet as well. I think it really lends to a little bit of a dressier style and look as well, so that's great. As far as the legibility, legibility is actually really good. The hands are very easy to see contrasting against, so despite the skeletonization and everything, you can clearly see that pop just at a glance. Having the numerals makes that a no-brainer there as far as what time you're looking at to easily see for quick reference, so that legibility is great. As far as the colors, I already talked about this when we looked at those. I think each of these colors are beautiful. They're saturated, they're nice color choices, I think they fit the design, great touch. And then that coin that we looked at in the unboxing portion, that's just such a cool feature. Really uh, enjoy that a lot, and that is a metal coin uh, for that for overall construction. Just a really classy, nice touch. And then the pricing, I think at $499, when you figure on the production version, not only does it have the Miyota movement, the overall quality in the design itself, the application of the loom I think is plenty respectable. Having that hardened coating on the production version is a really great touch. To me, I think $499 is a very fair price for it. As far as some of the critiques, you know, I honestly had to put a lot of thought into this because I've just been so pleased with this watch overall. That being said, one of the things that I do want to mention, the rotor. You know, this is always the case. It's kind of a characteristic of the Miyota movements, the 9015s or 9039 in this case. But that being said, because they're unidirectional, you can get that fast or loud rotor spin. I have found in my experience, it varies from watch to watch and from individual watch to individual watch. In this particular example, and I'm going from a sample of one, it is definitely on the noisier side. So it is one that you will notice um, from time to time on wrist. Does it take away from it? No, but it is something that I do want to mention. The hand length. This is one that really isn't to them, and as we can see as it comes around here at the 15 second mark, you can see that it comes out right to the tip, but then as it goes through the rest of its sweep, it's just by the nature of the design with having this kind of the proportions that you get with a rectangle design there, it is fairly far back. So while I talked about it has great legibility, it doesn't come as close to the chapter ring as I usually prefer, with the exception of when it's at its four closest points. So I think they did the length perfectly. It's just the design itself, something to be aware of if you're not familiar with those. And then the crystal finishing. On this being the prototype, there's some like smudges um, there on the uh, seven to eight o'clock uh, position. That's something, just a minor thing, and these are just quickly thrown together whenever they're doing prototyping for it, but it's something I saw. It. You might have seen it on camera here, so I'd be remiss if I didn't point it out. So where does that leave us overall? I've got to say, despite the fact that I have been completely and totally hyped for this watch, it has not let me down one bit. I am unapologetically smitten with this watch. I absolutely love it. 
this watch I couldn't give a higher recommendation to. If you like the style overall, very much encourage you to pick one up. I know I'm extremely excited to have one in my personal collection. So let me uh, let me know what you think. What's your favorite color? Do you like it? Is there something that I missed that you don't like? Let me know down in the comments. Additionally, as always, if you like the video, smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, give that subscribe button a tap. Thanks for watching.